This video is going to demonstrate the backup and restore capabilities in the sample app. We're going to show two basic capabilities, how to backup and restore a core data file locally, and then secondly, how to copy a backup file to iCloud so that you can restore that backup onto another device. Now it's important to note that this backup and restore process will not make sure the two devices remain synchronized. It's simply taking a copy of whatever was in the database on the one device and allowing you to restore it either back to that device or to another device using the same iCloud container ID. Before we run the demo, just quick, quickly um, explain what we've got on the screen. So on the right hand side we've got the app running in the simulator. Top left we've got um, we're showing the actual directory structure of the app's local storage and in the middle on the left we've got um, the directory structure for the app's ubiquity container and so that's the folder that gets synchronized with iCloud and then on the bottom we've got the actual iCloud container we're showing the actual iCloud container now in the top top left in the app's local storage um, just it's worth noting that to create the backup of the persistent store, we're using the persistent store coordinator migrate persistent store API. Um, so this allows us to make a copy of the store regardless of whether it's in iCloud or whether it's local. Uh, and we avoid issues associated with um, iCloud metadata that's, that Core Data puts into the store. It's also important to note that we're using journal mode for core data. If you're using wall mode you'll find out there's more than just one file that needs to be backed up and restored uh, so the process becomes a bit more complicated. Now once we've made the backup file in the local documents directory um, in order to copy it to iCloud we needed a coordinated file copy to make sure that any because the ubiquity container is a shared container, um, it's important to use coordinated file copy to, to make sure that the integrity of the, of the file uh, is maintained. It's also important to understand that when you're copying files from the ubiquity container, it's important to check what the download status is and if the file hasn't been downloaded from iCloud, to first download the file. And again, there are specific APIs to to do that, which we'll get into a bit later on. Okay, then, then finally, um, copying the file from the app's Ubiquity container into iCloud is all handled automatically by Apple's iCloud synchronization mechanism, so you don't have any control over that, other than initiating downloads when required. Okay, we're going to launch the app, um, and just set a few things up. Okay, so we've got the app running on the left and this is a new install. So it's asking us if we want to use local iCloud storage and we'll select local storage. I'm just uh, moving file manager around so we can actually see the container storage. Let me just open that up. Right, okay, so we've launched the app and it's created its persistent store in the local documents directory, which if you connect your device to iTunes, you'll be able to see. So I'm just going to run a background job quickly to create a bunch of um, companies. Okay, there we go. There's a background job just completed, so it just runs an automated job in, on a background thread to create the whole bunch of dummy data. So we've got 25 companies created. Um, and we will, and you can see that we've got a store in the app's local documents directory, but there is nothing in any of the iCloud containers. Okay, so I'll go to the backup control panel, and again, we've done made no backups, so I'll click plus to make a backup and you can see we've immediately created a backup file 
uh, it's pretty quick um, and there's a menu option showing a range of things you can do. So I'll just delete that one. You can see it's just disappeared immediately. So I'll create another copy and then I'll copy it to iCloud. <coughs> and there you can see it's copied it to the local Ubiquiti container and then after a few seconds you will see it gets replicated into iCloud. Now it's um, in the bottom left you can see the grayed out um, file name indicates that the file is busy uploading to to the cloud container. You'll, you'll notice that in the simulator the blue bar shows that the file has been downloaded so there is a local copy of the actual document. Okay, I made another backup and I'll just uh, create another copy it to the iCloud as well and in a few seconds you should see the iCloud container update. Now if, if you're running a simulator sometimes you have to tr trigger an iCloud synchronize. Okay, so we can see there that we've got the two files, we've copied them into iCloud. So another option is to send yourself a backup file via email. And again, built into the sample app, we're using the mail APIs to attach the file and to email it. Uh, kind of thing I can e email out of the simulator. I certainly can't show you how to receive it in the simulator because I don't believe there's a mail in the simulator. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete a couple of records out of the local copy and then we'll restore a copy from the one of the backups. Okay, I'm just running an automated delete job. It should, I think it just automatically deletes three records, the first three records. Right, so we'll delete another three records. And then we'll back this file up and then we'll restore from the original. So we've got uh, starting at record number 7 to record number 21 in this copy. Okay, so I'll go to our backups section and then I'll just make a backup of this particular file with the deleted records. And you can see they're all time-stamped, so in the most recent one shows at the top of the list. So I'll go back to our original one, and I will restore that file. And again, you can see it's pretty quick um, process to restore that file. And there we go. We've got a lot of data back. No duplicate data. I'm now going to just make another backup and then what I'll do is I'll launch a another instance of the simulator that doesn't have the app loaded and show you how on this new device we can download a backup. So you'll just notice that I've created another 25 records in the store. I'll create another backup and then I'll copy that uh, backup to iCloud. Okay, we've just got that most recent backup and it's appeared in iCloud. Uh, so I'll go and start up the, um, the new device.
Okay, I've just launched the the app on the new device. And once again, I'm going to select local only storage. So the app will go off and it will create a empty um, database. Now I go to the backup panel and I will then see the backups that we've uploaded from the other device and select one of them to download and you'll notice that the blue bar um, the bar becomes blue once the file is downloaded. The menu then pop-up menu then changes once the file is downloaded and gives you the option to restore from that file um, and I just click restore and prior to restoring it'll the app will back up the existing file so let's go and have a look and we should have this should have been the backup the database that had the 50 company records in it yep so there we go we've got all the 50 records no duplicates and as you can see we've quite successfully managed to restore from one of our iCloud backups okay and finally we'll just show how we can import um, a backup from an email <clears throat> so if you've sent an email with a backup then so in the email you'll you'll notice the attachment and when you click on the attachment you'll one of the options will be to select the sample app and when you select the sample app it'll import the file and open up on the backups page um, showing the imported file and you can then select that file and simply restore from it. Don't forget you can download the sample app at this URL.